Some think they're doing good on the internet when, in reality, their actions can be toxic. Let's dive into some online behaviors that are actually harmful. Cancel culture. Is cancel culture good or bad? Well, when someone commits serious crimes like essay or grape, canceling them seems straightforward. But for less clear issues or allegations, thoughtful consideration is needed but often neglected. Cancel culture promotes an all good or all bad perspective, but human nature is far more complex. It involves the mass shaming or boycotting of an individual or group based on their actions or statements, often without fully understanding the context. Humans are flawed beings, and it's in our nature to make mistakes. A person can innocently post a clip, meme, or tweet, only to be misinterpreted as something sinister. And even when they acknowledge their mistake, the internet often doesn't allow room for redemption. According to a study by the Pew Research Center, 61% of US adults say they're familiar with the term cancel culture, and opinions are divided on whether it is effective or fair. This phenomenon is toxic because it creates an atmosphere of fear, where people are afraid to speak out or make mistakes. They say the internet never forgets. Sometimes, maybe it should. AI manipulation in the wrong hands. Initially, we might think, AI art and images are harmless. They're just fun and games. Why take it seriously? We can generate art anytime with AI, and it often looks impressive, if you overlook the odd fingers. However, many AI-generated artworks are actually created from stolen samples of real artists' work. AI uses these samples to produce new images, raising serious concerns about the originality and ethics of the art. When it comes to creativity, the internet was once a safe space for artists to share their work. Now, artists can't be vulnerable with their art because predatory AI tools steal genuine creations without giving them any credit. On a darker side of things, what if AI manipulation ends up in the wrong hands and those intentions become malicious? A report by Deep Trace Labs found that 96% of deepfake videos online in 2019 were of pornographic nature, usually targeting women. With AI images becoming increasingly realistic, the misuse of technology can have devastating consequences for the victims. Deepfake pornography can lead to sextortion, where perpetrators create fake explicit videos or images of someone and use them to blackmail or coerce the victim. This can result in severe emotional and psychological trauma, damage to the victim's reputation, and even lead to job loss or strained personal relationships. We lack new laws to protect people from these issues because technology is advancing faster than the justice system can keep up. Doxing is the act of publicly revealing or publishing private, personal information about someone without their consent. This can include details like their home address, phone number, email, and other sensitive data. The goal is often to intimidate, harass, or harm the individual, and it can lead to serious privacy breaches and safety concerns. But oftentimes, Doxing can be disguised as something good when it's framed as an act of exposing someone for a perceived wrongdoing or unethical behavior. Remember when PewDiePie got doxxed here on YouTube? Yeah, that was quite crazy. While the internet can be a powerful tool for calling out bad or illegal behavior and seeking justice, it can also be misused to defame and damage someone's reputation unjustifiably. To put it plainly, doxing is the jungle justice for today's culture. The psychology behind doxing is saying, hey, Let's take this attack beyond threats and tweets to where the hurt can be worse and even lethal. A study conducted among secondary school students in Hong Kong highlighted that doxing can severely impact the mental health of victims, leading to anxiety, depression, and even PTSD. It's a gross violation of privacy that not many recover from. Gatekeeping Gatekeeping is the act of controlling or limiting someone's access to something by enforcing specific standards or criteria. While it can help maintain standards or quality, it can also exclude or marginalize people and ideas. This happens even in online spaces and forums. Imagine you'd love to be part of an online community, an online support group for a minority group, an online political forum, or an online career network. And for weird reasons, you're told you can't belong because you don't meet some arbitrary standard, don't fit a certain image, have a different opinion, don't fit a certain demographic profile or because of prejudiced assumptions about your background. Whether it's for political, religious, social, or support groups, gatekeeping can be toxic because it contradicts the pillars these communities stand for. Also, it excludes people and suppresses diversity of opinions, making it more challenging for new members to feel welcome. 
No one has the right to tell you you can't belong. Do you agree with these takes? Like this video and share your thoughts in the comments. Your feedback matters in creating safe spaces online. Posting sensitive content without warning. Some people are epileptic and sensitive to flash photography. Some have no tolerance for explicit content. Some are sensitive to gory and violent images and videos. And specific topics like an aliving or essay may trigger others. Posting sensitive content without warning is not only inconsiderate, but can also be harmful. While it's important to raise awareness about these issues, giving your audience a heads up is important if you're sharing triggering content. You chose them behind the content. You are human and you care. Virtue signaling. It's great to have morals and raise awareness, but when someone does it just for validation, profit, or exploitation, it's virtue signaling. It is when someone expresses opinions or values mainly to show off their moral correctness or gain social approval rather than genuine commitment. For example, someone uses popular hashtags to align themselves with a trending cause, gaining likes and followers, but doesn't contribute time or resources to actually support the cause. Or when a celebrity attends a high-profile charity event wearing a designer t-shirt with a slogan supporting environmental causes, they make sure to be photographed and post extensively about it on social media. But they continue to travel frequently in private jets and have a lifestyle that heavily contributes to their carbon footprint. Which leads us to the next point. Exploiting tragedy for content. This act is closely linked with virtue signaling. Using someone's tragedy to create content for views or likes is disrespectful and exploitative. For example, when an artist or famous person is unalived, because it is viral news, everyone wants to jump on it and act like they've been fans, when in reality, they don't actually care. It degrades the individuals involved but also trivializes serious issues people are victims of. On the other hand, individuals might voraciously consume media that depicts traumatic events such as crime documentaries, news reports of violent incidents, or graphic movies. This constant exposure can heighten feelings of anxiety and distress among viewers without them knowing. Also, exploiting tragedy for content desensitizes viewers to real-life suffering and undermines genuine activism. It's a line between raising awareness, expressing empathy, and just being exploitative. In the name of social justice, Many individuals and organizations have unconsciously crossed that line in the wake of social justice. On social media and in support groups, there can be a tendency to share and engage with stories of personal trauma. While this can foster community and support, it can also lead to a cycle where individuals are continually exposed to traumatic narratives, which can be overwhelming. Insensitive or cruel pranks. Oh come on, it's just a prank. What's the worst that could happen? Prank channels really took off on YouTube in the early to mid-2010s, with many popular pranksters getting huge followings. Cruel pranks, especially those that cause physical harm or emotional distress, are toxic. They often target unsuspecting individuals, causing real pain and discomfort for the sake of entertainment. There has been a rise of pranksters with cameras roaming the streets. These pranks could involve asking deeply personal questions or daring individuals to pull outrageous stunts. One recent case of this was popular streamer Natalie Reynolds, who dared an innocent woman to jump into a pool. What was sad was that the woman couldn't swim and began to drown while the streamer and her camera crew fled the scene. Luckily, bystanders came to the drowning lady's rescue. Even while having fun with pranks, we must ensure they remain harmless physically and emotionally for the participants in the online audience. Let's not normalize cruelty just for the clicks. Bandwagoning Bandwagoning happens because people have the natural desire to conform and think that if everyone else is doing something, it must be the right choice. But jumping on the bandwagon to shame or support someone just because it's trending can be dangerous. This behavior is tied to cancel culture. It discourages critical thinking and promotes a mob mentality. History and trends prove that people are more likely to conform to popular opinion in social media, even if it goes against their own beliefs. For example, if an individual is being trolled, cancelled, or hyped because it's popular, everyone jumps in without having the full context of the reason why. It's important to form your own opinions rather than blindly following the crowd. Echo Chambers Engaging only with like-minded individuals and content can be good, because it provides a sense of community and validation. But the dark side of it is that it can create echo chambers that reinforce biases and reduce exposure to diverse perspectives. This can lead to polarized views and a lack of understanding of other viewpoints. 
In the Netflix documentary, The Social Dilemma, former employees at top social media companies revealed the intentional strategy to ensure algorithms reinforce echo chambers. So if you support a particular cause, the only content you'll see will be pro that cause. While opposing viewpoints are filtered out, limiting your exposure to diverse perspectives and reinforcing your existing beliefs. It's essential to seek out diverse perspectives to broaden your understanding of the world. Despite numerous attempts like content flagging, community notes, censorship, and other systems out there to make social media platforms safe and positive for everyone, at the end of the day, it comes down to us to be the change we want to see. Social media may not be the real world, but it has real people in it. We should always be kind and respectful regardless of how different we are. For more in-depth analysis of social media behavior, watch this video. What are your thoughts on this topic? Share your experiences and thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more content. We'll see you in our next video. Thanks for watching and stay safe.